In this video, we will discuss universal design for learning and its application to course development and instructional design. This video is published by the Office of Online Learning at Mount St. Mary College. My name is Kristen Delasalle and I'm the Director of Online Learning. Along with my four support staff, we assist in the delivery and effectiveness of web enhanced and online courses and work in close partnership with Mount faculty and administrators such as the Library, Writing Center, and Disability Services. We recognize that the very nature of distance education and online learning and teaching is ever-changing and dynamic, and as such, we strive to facilitate and share our expertise regarding best practices in online pedagogy and learning, and prioritize the training and support of the faculty who must implement these methods in their classroom. In this video, we will discuss how universal design for learning is applied to the online classroom and how you can take simple steps towards universal design and a bit about web accessibility. And then we will land on takeaways and strategies for students with disabilities. We will conclude the presentation with information on how you can get the support you need while developing or revising your course. First, Implementing the principles of universal design and online learning means recognizing the diversity of students, their learning needs, learning preferences, and their lived realities. Some students are coming to the Mount to web enhanced courses with visual or hearing impairments, for example, or some students simply need more time to process the content from a video. In any case, it's important to anticipate the diversity of your students that may enroll in your course and to plan accordingly. To get started, realize that your content should come first. It will not be helpful to design the mechanics or aesthetics of your course until you have your content in place. Here are suggestions for planning your course. First, determine what elements and content you would like to include. For example, do you want videos or are your students working on an essay in your course? Two, use outlines or concept maps to plan the flow accordingly. It is always good to put your ideas on paper and then to make them final in your course shell. Familiarize yourself or seek training to learn what is possible with the learning management system. For here at the Mount, we use Moodle. You might be familiar with Blackboard or Canvas, but do realize that Moodle, as ev with every LMS, has its own set of affordances and barriers. Develop a navigation scheme that's based on your outline or concept map of your course, what will happen first, second, and how, you will, how your course will be organized. And consider the nine tips that we will discuss in the following slides. After you've completed the steps below, begin to post content. It's really just that easy. Be consistent throughout your course. Students may appreciate seeing a similar pattern each and every week. Use concise, meaningful test, test, text for links. Text besides links helps students understand what the link is for, how it can be used, and what they should do with that link after clicking it. Be as transparent as possible with your intention. To the extent possible, avoid requiring students to drill down on multiple times to reach your content. There's the two or three click rule, but also because too many clicks can be distracting. Provide a table of contents for easy navigation to all the components of your course. This may help. Any device or mechanism you can use to clarify expectations and navigation on your course site, the better. In your syllabus, include an accommodation statement. This helps students to understand your philosophy surrounding UDL and also brings to light any college policies surrounding the, topics of, the topic of accommodation. It is important to link to the Disability Services Office and website, and you can include this in your syllabus or on your eClass Moodle course site. Choose your LMS tools carefully. While many of the tools that are part of the most popular learning management systems support helpful instructional strategies, they may also present barriers for some students. An awareness of the potential barriers may help you to determine when to use or when to avoid or when to provide alternatives to these tools. You can always contact the Office of Online Learning if you're not sure. Currently, some of the testing tools have compatibility problems with some screen reader technologies. This occasionally results in the screen reader program crashing during the exam. 
a good practice would be have a mock exam available for your students to try to use so they can know ahead of time how their assistive technology will work for your exam. Because students with disabilities are often allowed the accommodation of what's called extended time on exams, it's important to be able to provide this accommodation in an online setting as well. In most course management systems, for example, eClass Moodle here at the Mount, it is possible to adjust an individual student's exam length, but it's not always simple to do this. In some cases, it's necessary to set up a different exam altogether for the student who needs that extended time. Consult with our OL staff on how you may set this up if you have a student who is eligible for this accommodation. When using a whiteboard, remember that students who are blind will not have access to what you write on the board. Because it creates an image instead of a text, a screen reader will not be able to capture it and read it. Some students who use a magnification software may ha also have difficulty seeing what's written on the whiteboard. Be sure to have alternative formats for the content provided on the whiteboard for these students. In the case of the face-to-face -face classroom, for example, use a dry erase marker that students with color blindness may be able to see, for example, a black marker. Navigating the email tool in some course management systems requires more clicks or keystrokes than should be necessary. Consider giving students the option to receive course email through their regular Gmail account or to set up a course email list using an accessible platform. As you get to know your students and your course content, you can gauge what is needed. Most learning management systems like Moodle are set up in multiple frames. Each frame is like a separate browser window. To the visual learner, it looks like one big window, but if you're using a screen reader to access the site, it's like navigating through several windows. Keep this in mind. Students with learning disabilities sometimes use text-to-speech software that may require them to reset their software when using a new window. Keeping the use of a new window to a minimum reduces the effort needed to navigate your course. One reason that you might choose to have content open in another window is that it makes the content more what's called printer-friendly. Problems printing content from an LMS result from the fact that it's in multiple frames. Teaching students to use a PC to right-click on the content as they wish to print and choose to print it. This will allow them to print only the content that's in that individual frame. Discussion forums are used in web-enhanced and online courses to create opportunities for knowledge sharing, practice writing skills, open discourse, and collaboration. Take advantage of threaded discussions as they provide opportunities for deeper learning outside of the classroom asynchronously. In discussion forums, one thing to note is that many students are in the habit of creating a new topic heading rather than relying on the previous one. Teaching students the advantage of keeping the discussion board organized so that they can scan it by topic is good. Good use of a threaded discussion greatly reduces the need for all students, especially those with screen readers, to open messages in order to determine their relevance. In discussion forums, provide students with the tips for posting to that discussion forum. You're welcome to take these steps and modify them for your own course or contact the OL staff for additional resources. Use color with care. Providing good color contrast is good practice. Do not use color alone to convey meaning. The use of color to convey meaning may result in your images or information not being accessible to students who are colorblind. Use color with care. Some students may prefer to work from hard copy documents, so you may choose to create materials in black and white that will print in black and white printer. Again, the color of red would be a barrier to the learning to learning if student has the student has a color blindness. Pages designed in well-coded HTML offer the ideal format for providing documents over the internet. If you don't know what this means, you can simply contact the Office of Online Learning and we can walk you through those steps. PDF files are only as accessible as the document from which they are created. Think about how students will access and consume the PDF file, and will it work for their screen reader, and some other considerations you may want to think about. When you create a word processing document using the formatting tools correctly, you're only one step closer to having a web accessible page. 
Another advantage of this feature is that you can immediately create a table of contents for your document. Finally, because student learning styles and preferences vary, providing opportunities for students to engage with materials in a variety of ways makes the course richer for everyone. Incorporating these diverse strategies may be time consuming, so this section is divided into two levels. Remember, if it's auditory, make it visual, and if it's visual, make it auditory. Adhering to web accessibility guidelines while developing your online course will benefit all students, including those with visual, hearing, mobility, and learning disabilities, as well as with learn other learning preferences. Accessibility guidelines for online course content developed in 2011 and implemented in 2012 are based on the internationally accepted web content accessibility guidelines. You can find them in the resources provided here. Remember, accessibility is the law. Requiring the use of an emerging technology in a classroom environment when technology is inaccessible to an entire population of individuals with disabilities is discrimination prohibited by the American with Disabilities Act of 1990 and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. There are many requirements we need to be aware of when designing web content for online courses as well as technology mediated courses. There are strategies that we can employ to help students with disabilities. Here are a few. YouTube offers a quick and convenient captioning. Captioning videos on YouTube will make your class accessible to more students and provide the information in both audio and text. Don't students love YouTube videos? We do too. Here are some links create to create your own YouTube channel and create your own accessible videos. What is most beneficial about YouTube is it allows you to create your own closed captioning. It's easy to use and produces captioning rather quickly. You probably will need to edit the captions, no worries. Errors are common but fairly easy to correct. And so making corrections within YouTube captioning editor is easy to do. The MSMC Library also has a repository of free videos for students and faculty from documentaries to educational videos, and they are all captioned. Contact the MSMC Library to learn more about Canopy videos. Also, TED Talks provide for great videos on contemporary topics by leaders in almost all of the academic fields, and all are accessible. Are you interested in designing a course using UDL as a principal? Make an appointment with an online learning staff member. Simply go to our website and make a consultation appointment. Do you have additional questions or need additional answers? Here is our contact information. Thank you and please do not hesitate to contact us for support as you design your course.